Hello, hello, hello. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you for being here. We took a little bit of a break over the summer, just a little reprieve, and we are back. We have a fabulous lineup moving into the fall for the rest of this year. So glad that you're here. In today's episode, we are going to look at how to finish the year strong. Yes, we have three months. Three months Roughly 90 days, I didn't calculate, uh, but we have three months until the end of 2024. And how do we want to finish this year strong so that we step into 2025 mm, solid, ready to go, ready to do this? And if you're new here, I'm Shauna DeMellon. I'm a lifelong medium and life coach. I have seen the spirit world and connected with them for my entire life. I'm a certified life coach. And I work energetically as well. Uh, if you haven't already, come over onto TikTok Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I go live. So come on over. We do uh, readings and we answer questions and we just have a whole lot of fun. So please do come over and find us. Okay. I'm going to give you different tools and strategies to implement into your life to create a phenomenal ending to this year. I always think of this year as harvest time. So every year at this time of year, I sort of look at the last 12 months and I look at how far I've come. I look at all of the goals. I look at everything I've accomplished. I sort of go, yeah, there's some weeding along the way. There's some plot twists along the way, but I look at everything that I've accomplished and I celebrate that. Okay. So I invite you to do the same thing. And if you've had a different difficult year, if you've had challenges, that's okay too. I want you to look at where you are today. And when a lot of challenges bring, they come up in our world, it means that we're ready to move beyond them. We're ready to move through them. We're ready to handle them. Okay. So one of the first things I like to do with people is I want you to review and adjust your goals. So again, looking at the last year, Okay, what did you set out to accomplish? Did you accomplish it? And if you haven't, that's okay too. We can adjust and we can course correct from now to the end of the year. This isn't an invitation to gaslight yourself or throw yourself under the bus. <laughs> We're not beating ourselves up. We are just looking at, okay, what did I set out to accomplish and what am I doing moving forward? Maybe these goals don't align with you anymore. Maybe you're like, meh, I don't want that. I, I want to move forward. And there's a key component to manifesting, achieving our goals, and it is this. We're going to talk a little bit more about it in just a bit, but a lot of people will fall off because once they achieve whatever that goal is, that result, the serotonin and the dopamine drop off. Yep. So when we have a goal that we're working towards, we have a target, we have a result we're working towards, our body is releasing serotonin and dopamine because we're striving towards something. And once we hit that goal, get the result, whatever it is, those levels start to drop off. Okay. So a lot of people get there and they're like, oh, that's it. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So something I love to tell people is that we need something to rub up against. Okay. What I've noticed in my coaching practice, I have several, several clients who have ADHD. And now ADHD, I see as a superpower because you guys have like 18 tabs open at a time. You're kind of magic. <laughs> Let's be real. You're kind of magic. You have 18 tabs open at a time, but you can hyper-focus just like that. And you are so kind and caring and interesting and funny. And you're just all that in a bag of chips. Okay. So I want to share something with you. Because A, we're going to review and adjust our goals, okay? And for our, for our talk today, our time today, we're going to set the goal as we're going to lose 20 pounds before the end of this year. So that's, that's the goal that we're going to set together. And then I'm going to show you how to navigate that and what you need to put in place to make that happen and beyond, okay? So reviewing and adjusting your goals. I want you to pick just one thing, one thing that you can work on from now till the end of the year. Maybe it's something that you've been working on for, throughout the whole year, and I'll give you the tools and the techniques to get that going. Maybe it's something new. K, 
Okay. Not something so crazy that your energy won't touch it. Not something so crazy that your, your mind is going to go, uh, no, that's not happening. We want something that's going to push us, but we want something that's like realistically attainable. Okay. So what motivates you? So number one is reviewing and adjusting your goals. Number two, we need to create effective systems. Okay. If you haven't read Atomic Habits, I highly recommend it. You can download it as an audiobook and listen to it. Put your earbuds in, go for a walk when you're driving. Okay. Atomic Habits. The key to making things work, it, uh, consistency is vital. So diligence, discipline, I like to use the word consistency. So when you consistently show up, you're going to see results. And when we create effective systems that work for us, and sometimes we need to try a few different things on to see what works for us, but when you have effective systems in place and you're consistent, you will be successful. You just will be, okay? So these are the motivators for people that have ADHD. And I'm not prescribing, I'm not, I'm not a medical doctor. I just want you to sort of play with this and kind of have a look at this and see if there's anything in this list that would motivate you Okay, because if we don't have a juicy why, if we don't have something motivating us, driving us, we'll get bored, we'll coast, we won't get stuff done, we'll kind of flake out, whatever. And I want you to remove the words try, should, and maybe. <laughs> well, you can keep them, but those words are all kind of the hokey pokey. One foot in, one foot out. Eh, I might show up. Eh, I should do this. I'll try. Instead, it's I can and I will this is happening. Okay. When we choose it and feel it with every cell of our body, that emits a different broadcast to the universe. And we do that enough times, the universe is going to match that. Okay. There are emotional states. And David Hawkins developed something called the consciousness scale. And they measure the emotional state starting at shame. Shame is at the bottom. The vibration of love is at 500. And there are a multitude of other emotion, emotional states. So I want you to think of what your what is your emotional set point? Are you happy? Are you filled with possibilities? Are you angry? Do you go into victim? Do you go into judgment? Okay. So I want you sort of to look at that. And once we understand what our emotional set point is, if it's not something that is bringing us beautiful things into our world, we can shift and change that. Because the, the universe is matching Whatever our set point is, whatever we're broadcasting to the universe is what the, is, is what the universe is going to match. So if we're broadcasting happiness, possibilities, magic, joy, peace, hope, that's what the universe is going to show up with. If we're broadcasting judgment, hate, hate's a strong word, hate, disappointment, grief, victim, anger, blame, shame, guilt, we're just going to attract more things that keep that in place. Okay. So I want you to have a quick look at that and do not gaslight yourself. Don't you dare. This isn't to make you wrong. This is just when we have awareness of what's happening, then we can shift and change it. Awareness of something is so powerful because when you have the awareness and you start to look at making different choices, that is courage. Okay. So these are the motivators for people with ADHD. And again, if you don't have ADHD, don't worry about it. I just want you to I just want you to listen to this. Number 1, interest. Focusing on tasks related to their interests will what will motivate them. Number 2, challenge. Setting achievable goals and breaking tasks into smaller parts will challenge people with ADHD. 3, urgency. Creating external pressure around a task. Okay. Four, novelty, new and exciting experiences will motivate people with ADHD. Five, passion, remembering why they're doing a task, that big juicy why they're passionate about something. Okay. So for ADHD people, and there are a lot of you, I coach a lot of people that have ADHD, it's understanding what motivates you. Because once you understand what motivates you, mm, it gets you going. So for myself, I know that a sense of urgency, external pressure, I push myself, that motivates me. So as an example, today is September 30th, 2024. 
October 11th, I'm leaving on a trip to head down to Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, yes, I am. I've decided yesterday I'm going to go balls to the wall till I go on that trip and get as much done as I possibly can. <laughs> so I'm using that. I'm kind of rubbing up against that. If we don't have something that we're rubbing up against, we will coast, we will get bored, we will give up, we'll get complacent, we're not engaged, we're kind of there, kind of not. So something to rub up against, again, is it something that interests you? Is it something that's new and exciting? Is it something challenging where you can break it down into goals, achievable goals? Is it something that has urgency or is it something that's passionate? Again, I want you to figure this out. And again, this doesn't mean that you have ADHD and I'm not prescribing you. That's not what this is. This just sort of gives you an idea. What is it that motivates you? Because these are universal. The, this list that motivates people with ADHD is universal. I've seen it in my practice for 20 years. What is it that motivates you? What is it that gets you so excited to get out of bed in the morning? You're here to uplift the planet. You want to inspire so many people, right? What is that? What is that thing? What is it that motivates you? Is it money? There's nothing wrong with that. Is it money? Is it creating a legacy? Is it helping people? What is it that motivates you? Because once you have that, then you can start to create effective systems around that. And this goes back to atomic habits, okay? Because consistency and showing up is going to do so much for you. I promise. It's going to do so, so much for you, okay? So back to, we're just using this as an example. We're going to lose 20 pounds by the end of this year. So something that you can do is also write yourself a letter or a card saying, oh my God, and you're going to date it December 31st. Oh my God, I've lost 22 pounds. Oh my God, I, I, I just went shopping. I can buy whatever I want or I can shop in this certain store that I love. I just feel so good in my skin. Oh my God. Oh my God, I did it. And it's almost like we're celebrating us. Yay, you, you did it. So you're you're looking at this from that version of you because there's a version of you that's lost the 20 pounds. How does that version show up? What is that version wearing? Okay, so that's another thing that you can start to implement is stepping into that end time frame and celebrating. And what does it feel like to have that accomplishment? Okay. The third piece to this that is so important, and this is this this is a game changer, is falling in love with the process and the person that you become, not the result. And this is what throws people. Because when, when you're striving towards a goal, so say we're working towards losing 20 pounds, and again, this is just an example we're using. December 31st, 2024, I have lost 20 pounds maybe even more. When I'm striving towards that goal and I know what it is, it has to be measurable as well. And we'll talk about that. Striving toward that goal is releasing serotonin and dopamine. And it's keeping me going. I'm focused. I'm excited. I'm working towards it, working towards it, working towards it. And again, it's releasing serotonin and dopamine. When I hit that target, so it's December 31st, 2024, I hop on the scale, I've lost 23 pounds. I go, oh my God, I did it. And then the dopamine and the serotonin are going to start to drop. And then people go, well, now what? Oh, I'm going to go have beer and wings. I'm going to go have a cake. I don't care. <laughs> so this is why we need to create something beyond when we achieve the result. So using our example, okay, December 31st, 2024, I will have lost a minimum of 20 pounds. And January 15th, I'm on a flight to Mexico as I'm going to rock the bikini that I have hanging in my closet or whatever, or the trunks, maybe it's a Speedo, <laughs> or maybe I have a wedding. Maybe I have a special event that I'm working towards. I'm going to go to that event and I'm going to feel so good in my skin. I'm going to feel so confident. I'm going to know that I showed up for myself every day for 90 days. And in the process of that, I've become a totally different person. I become someone who is very proud of what I've done. I become someone who is demure, <laughs> who is cutesy, <laughs> who is magic. 
okay, I've become a totally different person. And again, from that point, it's always setting, it's always what's beyond that, what's beyond that, what's beyond that, what's beyond that, because that keeps the serotonin and the dopamine going. Okay, so a lot of people will hit their target and then they kind of get depressed. Well, now what? I did this, I wrote my first, um, I created and designed my first deck of Oracle cards years ago. And I worked so hard to get um, to get the cards done and to get them, you know, to work with the design team and and you know get everything channeled. I channeled a guidebook that went with it. Phenomenal! I was so excited to get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. At the last day, I wrote the last word. I sat there and I was like, I cried. I was like, Oh, it's over. What? Oh, well, now what do we do? <laughs> I didn't know this piece. So that whole time when I was creating that, I was I gave myself a month to write the guidebook. I was like, this, this guidebook has to be done in a month. So every day I would light my candle and start working. I would light the candle and I would start working because that serotonin and dopamine was being released every day. Okay. Not realizing that when I wrote the last, when the last word came out and it was done, I was like, what? Oh. I was happy it was done, but I was also sad. I was like, now what? Because the dopamine and the serotonin immediately started to drop because I finished it. Now, whenever I'm working on something, it's okay, we're going to get this piece done. And then I already know what the next piece is after that, before I'm finished the first piece. So then I keep the serotonin and the dopamine flowing. Okay. Does that make sense? And I don't know who this is for, but if you fall off the wagon, I don't want you to beat yourself up. I want you to tell yourself, I'm right where I'm meant to be. If challenges start to show up in your world, okay, I'm ready to move into, I'm ready to move beyond them. I'm going to figure it out. It's fine. We're going to figure this out. Okay. So you're going to look at your, you're going to review your goals, making any adjustments. Maybe we want to, maybe you want to pick something new for the next 90 days, which is fine. Maybe you want to just really hammer in and focus in on something you've already been working on for the next 90 days, whatever it is. You're going to review that and adjust the goals. You're going to create effective systems. Again, I highly recommend that you read Atomic Habits. You're going to figure out what motivates you because when you know what motivates you, mm, you will get so much done. I promise you. Because some people think I have to suffer and I have to hustle and I have to work 16 hour days and I have to, mm, I have to be in the gym, you know, using our example, you know, with losing 20 pounds, you know, I, I have to cut out eating. I can't have fun. I have to work out six days a week. I have to annihilate myself. You actually don't. There's a balance and there's a formula. So in using our example to lose weight, maybe you're going to look on Instagram or TikTok and you're going to find people that specialize in helping people to lose weight. So if you're pre-menopausal, that's going to be a different formula than somebody who's in their early 20s. Women compared to men. If you want to lean out or you want to build muscle, do you want to increase your cardiovascular health? Do you want to climb mountains? Do you want to run marathons? Do you want to just lift weights so that you feel toned and, and you just love the feel of it? Like, what does that look like for you? So again, we're using the example of losing 20 pounds. So what kind of food will you be eating? Will you be tracking your food? Are you measuring your macros? I know as women get older, I'm I'm in my 50s now. As women get older, we need to watch the protein. We need to do weight-bearing exercise to keep our bones nice and strong. Things shift and change depending on what age you are, depending on what your life looks like, okay? Depending on what your mobility looks like. Do you want to do yoga? Do you want to go kickbox? Fabulous. I love kickboxing. Do you want to go mountain biking? I love going to the gym. I'm a gym rat. Okay. What does that look like for you? What's fun for you? Again, what is it motivating? What's motivating you? What's going to light that fire under your butt to, to go and do it on the days when you don't really feel like doing it? On the days where there's nobody saying, hey, you should be doing this. Hey, especially for my entrepreneurs, there isn't anyone standing here going, okay, Shauna, here's what you need to do today. No, there isn't. There's Shauna here that knows what she needs to get done every day. And if Shauna doesn't get the stuff done every day, guess what? There's anybody else that's doing that. <laughs> so I kind of have to, I have to show up and do the stuff. Okay. 
again, these are motivations for people with ADHD. This doesn't mean that you have ADHD. This doesn't mean that that I'm I'm diagnosing anyone. I just I've seen this and I think these are universal. Okay, just again, these are examples and I want you to see and start to recognize what is it that motivates me? Is it having a sense of accomplishment? Am I creating a legacy? Okay, am I is it something that interests me? Is it something that is novelty? Is it new and exciting? Does that get me going? Is it a challenge? Is it achievable goals and breaking them into smaller pieces, kind of like running a marathon? Is it urgency, creating the external pressures? That one works for me. I said, again, like I said, October 11th, we're leaving on our trip. And I'm like, I'm going to get so much done. I am going to keep focused and get so much done. And then I can take that week off and relax, come back, and we go again. So always setting those goals, something to rub up against. So sense of urgency, or is it something passionate? Remembering why you're doing the task. Why are you doing it? What is it? Does it light you up? What is it? So understanding what it is that lights you up, what it is that motivates you and creating effective systems. Okay. And then number three, I think this could be the most, the most important one, but the other ones are important as well. It all flows together is falling in love with the process, the person you become, not the process and not the result. Because when we are striving towards something, so we're losing 20 pounds by the end of this year, when we're striving towards that, and we come up with a game plan to work towards that, what our, our systems are, our effective systems based on what motivates us, we're going to have higher levels of serotonin and dopamine that are going to keep us going. Okay, knowing that December 31st, when I get on that scale, and it says I'm down 23 pounds, I'm going to go, yes, I did that. And if I don't have another goal, if I don't have something beyond December 31st set up, the dopamine and the and the serotonin are going to start to drop. So then I have to have something else I'm looking forward to. So maybe I'm taking a trip. I'm taking a trip or I'm going to a wedding or I'm I'm going to go on a shopping spree or whatever that is. It doesn't matter what it is, but there always has to be something beyond the result. We get the result. What's next? We get the result. What's next? Because we're never done. We're never done. That's why when people accomplish a goal, it's like, okay, hmm, what do I do with that? <laughs> now what? right? You'll notice that any any top athlete, they will go, there's a, a lady, there's a gal that I follow on Instagram. She's fabulous. She's in her 70s. And she still she still uh, competes in bodybuilding. She is absolutely fin- fabulous. Her name is Renee. I can't remember off the top of my head what her last name is, but she is such an inspiration. So she is at you know, she gives prep work. She does like, she does like videos to show what her prep is and she shows what her outfits are. And she's so excited. And she's like, it's, you know, it's, this is what we're doing. We're getting ready backstage. And this is what I ate today. And she's taking people along the journey. And then afterwards she says, okay, we finished first place or we finished second place, or this is what we experienced. This is what it looked like on to this one next. So she always has the next one coming. So she celebrates what she accomplishes and she goes, yes. And then she's always got the next thing figured out. Okay. So that is so very important. The other thing as well is that it needs to be something measurable. So we're using, we're using weight loss as the example. So it needs to be something measurable. So if you right um, at week four, you're doing a weigh-in, maybe you're doing a weigh-in every week. I don't recommend it every day because everything things fluctuate too much. So as an example, if you're weighing in every three weeks, four weeks, all right, and you're jotting that down where you can see it. Next weigh in, jotting it down. Maybe you're taking measurements, okay? Maybe there's a certain size that you would like to be. I want to be a size 10, okay? These are the measurements of a size 10. This is where I'm starting. It needs to be measurable. Same thing with your finances. I have a huge whiteboard in my office that tracks everything from January of this year. So I see what the business did in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Pretty soon September is going to be in there. Okay. So I can look back and go, "Mm, that's what we did. That's how much we've grown. And this is the target. This is where we're headed. And then always beyond that. And if I don't hit the target, like I missed my target the one month by like 500 bucks. I was like, well, shit. Okay. 
fine, whatever. I celebrated that I hit that target. I was like, all right, this is what we hit. That's pretty fucking amazing. And we go again. Is there something more I can tweak? Is there something different I can do? I go back to I go back to what my my um, strategies are, what those effective systems are. So in this last month in September, I was sick for a week. So when I was looking at my numbers yesterday, I was like, no, nah, we're a little shy. This is the target where we fell a little bit short, but it was okay. I was sick and that's okay. It is what it is. Life happens. So same thing like our weight loss example. If you, you know, go out, you celebrate, your friend invites you out for dinner and you have a glass of wine, maybe you have the deep fried pickles, maybe you have the cake for dessert, enjoy it, knowing that you can ease off the gas and enjoy things and have treats, knowing that you're going to pick things up again, knowing that, okay, that's all good. It's all good. I know what my end goal is. And I know that I have room in there. They call it the 80-20 rule. So if you're consistent 80% of the time, that you're going to have those results. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be 100% every day, hammer it in. That's very difficult to sustain when we're first starting to implement these different systems. So we want to get the momentum. We want to get the consistency. We want to understand what motivates us because we're all different. We're all motivated by different things. We're all motivated by different things. And if you're feeling stuck, feel free to book in with me. I have 15, 30, and 60-minute sessions. I can help you get unstuck. I can help you to come up with your effective systems. I can help you to understand what motivates you. I can give you the whole blueprint for you to move forward and create a life that you love. So if you do need help, feel free to book in, okay? And just understanding that life is a journey. Some people say that life is like we're we're peeling back layers of an onion, whereas I think of it as an artichoke because at the center of an artichoke is a heart. So we're peeling back these different layers. And again, Falling in love with the process, not the result. Falling in love with who you were going to become, okay? Because at the end of 90 days, you look back and go, I showed up. I was consistent. I was focused. I was disciplined. I went and worked out even when I didn't feel like it. I had fun. I celebrated, right? Maybe every four weeks, you know, we're, again, we're using the weight loss as an example. Maybe every four weeks, you're going to get new workout out gear. Maybe every four weeks, you're going to get a new pair of workout runners, right? Like, and just looking for things to look forward to, to celebrate your accomplishments along the way, knowing that we need to move beyond the result. Okay. So it's having that. So again, December 31st, 2024, you can even write yourself a congratulations card, date it December 31st, 2024. Oh my God. Yay, you, you did it. You're down 23 pounds. Oh my God. I'm so proud of you. You're incredible because there's a version of you who's already done it. So we just need to get an alignment with that version. Okay. And then moving beyond that. So, okay, I'm down 23 pounds. Do I have a little bit more I want to release? Do I want to add muscle? What, what am I working on next? And it's always about stepping into the best version of us, always stepping into the best version of us, okay? And again, knowing that when you're working towards that goal, that result, that the dopamine and the serotonin are flying, and once you achieve it, you have to have what's next, what's beyond that, because if you don't, those levels will drop and you'll just go, meh, whatever, okay? Okay. Have fun with that. Drop me some comments below. Let me know what you're working on and let's celebrate each other. And again, if you're feeling stuck, if there's something I can help you with, feel free to book in. Just knowing that you've got three months, decide and choose that you're going to step in. You're all in. Even if you pick, pick one thing, right? Maybe it's something you've already been working on. Maybe it's something completely new. 90 days, I am all in and I'm going to do this. And this is the result, and this is beyond that result. So imagine if December 31st, 2024, it's to release 20 pounds. You, you weigh in and you've lost 24 pounds. You're like, oh my God, where? what are you doing next? Well, I'm going on a trip in two weeks, so I'm going to rock that bikini or those Speedos. Mm -hmm. On that trip, okay, what am I doing when I get back? Do I want to train to hike Kilimanjaro? Do I want to, you know, do a marathon? 
right? Like, what is it that I want to start working on next? Because we're never done. I think that's something that people don't understand is that we are never done. We are always shifting and changing and growing and moving into a new version of us. And as we are moving towards a new version of us, some of our old stuff could come up. It could be old beliefs. It could be old systems, old stories, and that's okay. If you have challenges that come up, it means that you're ready to move through it now. If you have challenges that come up, it's like, okay, I'm ready to handle this. This is show, This is coming up right now because I'm going to work through this. And again, if you need more help to work through it, feel free to book in. Okay. I send you all of my love. And I'll be back in a couple of weeks. We'll have another episode. We've got lots of fun stuff now until the end of the year. If there's anything I can help you with, please reach out. If you have an amazing story that you'd like to share, please reach out. We're always looking for guests to be on the show. I send you mountains of love and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.